So up next, we had uh, a brief backstage segment. Sheamus tying up his wrists, and then the camera kind of pans out, and we see Roman Reigns is there. Sheamus asks Ray, or wow, well, Sheamus. <sighs> Sheamus asks Reigns uh, if he's ready for a fight, and Reigns just kind of, you know, does the Reigns thing. He kind of stays quiet, doesn't say too much. Sheamus eventually brings up the whole thing where the Shield used to kind of find excuses to beat anyone, including Sheamus, down. And he doesn't know if he should trust Reigns. And Reigns says, and I quote, if I wanted to take you out, you'd be unconscious right now. <laughs> yes. Reigns is so terrific at the trash talk. It's ridiculous because he just keeps it short and sweet. And that's how he needs to keep it. You know, he's not one of these verbose individuals like, say, a, a Randy Triple Orton H. comes to mind. Or, yeah, Triple H. You know, he does perfectly within the confines of these sound bites. And I hope he keeps up that promo style as he continues to ascend the ladder. No pun intended, considering the money in the bank is on the horizon. Uh, Seamus kind of, you know, jokes about it. See, that's what I love, fella, the confidence. And uh, it goes on and on. And then finally says, you know, it's going to be so magical when at Money in the Bank I climb the ladder and become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And, and Roman Reigns just kind of gives him that look. I don't believe in magic. I believe in Roman Reigns. And, so and then he you. walks away. So good. What a boss. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So good. All right. So uh, after that brief backstage segment, we got a ta – uh, wow, I almost said tag team match uh, – match between Bo Dallas and Titus O'Neil. Uh, Bo comes out, and uh, I feel like he cut a promo before the match, but I don't remember what he said. I do, so I can cover you on that. He pretty much said, Titus, you know, last week you fell off your horse. Then you got back on, only to fall off again. But it's okay, because tonight you're going to show all these people that all you have to do is believe. I love it, dude. I love it. And the crowd oh, loves it, too. Get it over as a baby face. Can we just acknowledge that? Does it terrify you more than it does me? Yes. It's the first sign of the apocalypse, I'm convinced. It, it really is. This man, folks... For those of you who may be uh, tuning into TwitWow for the first time or hearing us discuss Bo Dallas for the first time, first of all, welcome. We have cookies. Bo Dallas made them. Uh, second of all, you have to understand, to put this in perspective, Bo Dallas on NXT, people used to literally turn their backs to him when he competed. He goes to the mainstream crowds where, I'll be honest, Ash, and I don't want to speak for you, I had my reservations because I'm thinking, oh, God, what if this flops? What if they don't connect with him? What if he's not getting heat? He's not getting anything, and people are just disinterested? Because I know people still like to hearken back to when he first appeared at the WWE, you know, that Royal Rumble appearance and then that non-title victory over Wade Barrett, and say, oh, well, it worked so successful that well, Marks, <laughs> he didn't have, you know, the gimmick that he does now and the polish that he does now, but I was still concerned. But to see him make a legitimate connection where people get into it and actually say, Bo, leave with him, What? Do you have anything See, dude, to say? And to me, that means that it has failed already because he was supposed to be a top heel and he isn't getting heat. Do you think, though, him being a babyface could work? I mean, should we roll with this? Well, I mean, it could work, but now who's going to fill that heel role? I... I don't know, but see, this is the problem, dude. We gotta understand. And I'm not saying this against you because I know I know you recognize this, but I'm hoping WWE recognizes. You know, we're not in the '80s anymore. I don't really think the creative team or, or anybody w within the um, the bureaucratic part of WWE, you know, the business side of it, really heavy, uh, can control who's a babyface and who's a heel anymore. That power rests solely with the crowd these days. You can try manipulation, you can try psychology, and yeah, there are still times where they'll knock it out of the park, for sure. But for the most part, the crowd today, from city to city, really does dictate whether you're a heel or a face, almost completely. And there is no greater proof than the, of that than Bo Dallas, and that's what scares me, because they are making him a baby face. And that's just something I never thought I'd say. Yeah. It's almost like the exact opposite because on NXT, they booked him like a babyface. They booked him strong. He won a lot. 
He eventually won the title when nobody thought that he should have and cut a babyface promo after winning the title and everyone hated it. Everyone was booing it. When he would come out to cut promos, he would get jeered rather than cheered. And it eventually got so bad that, like you said, people were literally, when his music would hit, they would turn around and face the crowd rather than facing the ring. But eventually it got to the point that he went from this annoying little pipsqueak who was condescending to more talented people than him and did, didn't deserve the spot that he was in to genuinely entertaining guy who probably at that point had accepted his flaws and accepted them and kind of ran with them. And pretty much since that point, he's been entertaining and it's getting over with the mainstream crowd because they didn't like the mainstream crowd didn't. And I, I already talked about this in one of our Twitter lives before the mainstream crowd didn't see that obnoxious guy who was condescending towards guys that were better than him, like Sami Zayn and, you know, Adrian Neville and all these guys that had a ton of respect. And he was walking around calling them kids and saying that they're not as experienced as him to get that heel heat. And he's just coming straight in with the gimmick that he had to close out NXT, which everybody loved at that point because he was genuinely entertaining. So it's like they skipped his heel phase on WWE because they didn't try to recreate the heel heat that he garnered on NXT in the same way that he got it on NXT in the first place. Right. And see, that's the thing. You know, on NXT, it was a completely different animal than what we got here. Because he, he was over the top with a lot of catchphrases, not just believe. He had all of these over-the-top antics that you still see when he comes to NXT, as uh, noted by the recent police uh, ejections from the arena, which were absolutely amazing. But the mainstream incarnation of Bo Dallas, as I'll call it, was um, far more polished and refined. You know, it was almost like the Tim, uh, is it Tabo? I always get it wrong. Tim Tebow. See, I was going to say Tebow, and then I, oh, uh, oh, uh, and then I thought that was the wrong one. Tebow of, you know, Monday Night Raw, Friday Night SmackDown, that's kind of what they're playing up. You know, JBL always saying, how inspirational is he, Michael? All you have to do is believe. You could even be an average commentator at best if you just believe, Michael. And, and, you know, things like that. So people didn't get to see that other facet of Bo Dallas where he's just really in hyperdrive with the obnoxygen and everything else. And, you know, I think you're absolutely right. That's how he's able to make that connection. What I'm curious about, because I, I noticed this trend was growing, I, I think, on, like, the last SmackDown or two SmackDowns, like, before last, where we saw Bo Leave signs and Bo Dallas seemed to have his own little section. So it seems like it's having this carryover effect. I'm wondering how long that's going to last, and even more so, is it going to grow? So, you know, that's definitely something on my mind. I think it is going to grow. I'm just curious as to how people are going to react if and when he wins his first title, because that was what really sparked the heel turn on NXT. So I'm curious as to whether or not he's going to get that kind of reaction if he becomes a, a babyface champion on the main roster. Right, right. Because, you know, when he becomes a champion, I envisioned it as this huge heel moment where people are like, Booing, man, this sucks. You suck. And how are they going to react? Like, he, well, no, been... that's the thing, though, dude. The 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 moment when he wins the title isn't the part where you, he gets booed. Halfway through the title reign is when he gets booed because then you build him up and he starts beating guys that you never thought he would be able to beat as a heel, and people hate him, and it becomes it gets to the point where you want nothing more than to see somebody, anybody, take that title away from him, and eventually. Somebody kind of gets built up separately as like a, a good enough baby face that maybe they would be able to. And they get in that match with Bo and they come this close. But Bo does something tricky or sly or cheaty to win the match and barely get away. And they, they leave you with that feeling of, oh, man, if only that couldn't have if, if only that one thing wouldn't have happened. He could have. He could have. He should have. He would have won that title from Bo. And eventually you build that up and eventually you put the title on him. And that's when. You get this huge moment like, oh, my God, finally, Bo Dallas has been defeated. The witch is dead. Ding dong. He's been defeated. It's an awesome moment. And sadly, NXT waited a little bit too long for it because by the time they took the title off of Bo, people were turning and already starting to like him as a human. Right, right. And I feel like you make an excellent point because as it stands right now, as what happened in this match, 
Bo's been winning his matches clean. Right. Uh, you know, he hasn't had to resort to cheating tactics or anything else. But he also hasn't really hand. faced any legitimate competition. That is true. That is true. But the point still stands like he is winning clean no matter what right. the competition is. Right. And I think that's why people have been able – you know, to get behind him. But then when he, he faces more serious baby faces and it's championship implications and he does the thumb to the eye or he grabs the handful of tights. Or he works. does the exposed turnbuckle. Right, right. Or the exposed turnbuckle. I mean, that's what made Bo famous. And, you know, to me, that'll be when the, the gears really start turning and Bo really comes into his own as the villain I think you and I know he really can be. But for now, I guess I'm just going to enjoy this ride and... Bo leave. Yep. All righty. So uh, after the match, he cuts another promo. Well, I mean, of course, he has to do a victory lap because he did win this match. He's nine and Bo. And uh, he, he makes darn sure to let Titus O'Neil know that because after he gets done his victory lap, he gets in Titus's face with the microphone and says, Titus, I want you to know I'm nine and Bo now. And then Titus smacks the mic out of his hand and Bo chases out to the outside and he goes, whoops. Silly me, such a Butterfingers. <laughs> One of my favorite moments of the night right there. One of my favorite lines of the night right there. So yeah, Bo Dallas is hilarious. Um, after he picks up the microphone, he says, Just remember, Titus, don't stop Bo leaving. And that's how we close out this segment. So good. I love Bo Dallas. Clearly the crowd is starting to as well. Uh, great discussion on it. We can move on. <laughs> 